There is a dire warning tonight about a greenhouse gas called nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide. It has hundreds of times more warming power in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide. It comes from the nitrogen in agricultural fertilizer, which is used around the world to increase crop yields. When most people think about nitrous oxide, the first thing that they usually think of is laughing gas or maybe the sedative used in hospitals. But very rarely do they think about climate change or greenhouse gases when they think about nitrous oxide. And I don't blame them for that. Nitrous oxide is not a well-known climate change villain like carbon dioxide or methane. And nor is it shown in the news for that reason. But rather for reasons like these. All of this has led to many scientists calling nitrous oxide the world's forgotten greenhouse gas. Like any other greenhouse gas, nitrous oxide traps heat into the atmosphere. But unlike carbon dioxide, Nitrous oxide is almost 300 times more effective in trapping heat and a single molecule of nitrous oxide can stay in the atmosphere for about 114 years. And I'm sure you know what the consequences of greenhouse gas on the planet are. Nitrous oxide as a greenhouse gas has been around probably since the Ordovician period and its levels in our atmosphere have varied throughout time. But never has the concentration of nitrous oxide in our atmosphere been this high. Take a look at this graph. Notice how from 800,000 BC to almost the end of 100,000 BC, the concentration of nitrous oxide in our atmosphere hasn't exceeded 300 parts per billion. But if you notice the same graph towards the start of the 19th century, you can see a steady increase in nitrous oxide emissions. There are many ways by which nitrous oxide is released into the atmosphere, the most predominant of which is farming. And coincidentally, a significant agricultural event took place during the 1950s, the Green Revolution. The Green Revolution is a bloodless battle. It's the fight against famine and the fight for improved agricultural production, a battle that is far from ending. Agriculture is a dirty word in the world, and yet food is pretty important three times a day. Whether the Green Revolution actually succeeded in creating food security and making countries self-sufficient is open to debate. But the one thing it did manage to create successfully was a climate problem. And to know how, we first need to understand the nitrogen cycle. Nitrogen is something that all living beings need to survive. In humans alone, nitrogen is responsible for creating amino acids, nucleic acids and even our DNA. But we don't get that nitrogen from the atmosphere. We get our nitrogen content mainly from other living things such as plants and animals which also don't get their nitrogen content from the atmosphere. Animals get their nitrogen from plants, which in turn get their nitrogen from converting atmospheric nitrogen into nitrate ions. So the nitrogen cycle basically demonstrates how atmospheric nitrogen is converted to nitrate ions and how these nitrate ions are converted back to atmospheric nitrogen. And the three stages that make up the nitrogen cycle are nitrogen fixation, nitrification and denitrification. Nitrogen fixation is the first stage of the cycle. It is the process by which atmospheric nitrogen is converted to ammonia by natural phenomena like lightning and bacteria. This process can also be replicated artificially by combining the hydrogen and nitrogen under a specific temperature to produce ammonia. Ammonia can also be extracted from dead plants and animals. When they die, a certain type of bacteria breaks down and converts the organic nitrogen in their body to ammonia. This process is called ammonification. Ammonification is not really a separate stage in the cycle, but just another way of extracting nitrogen and converting it to ammonia. The second stage of the cycle is called nitrification. It's a process of biological oxidation that converts ammonia from the first stage of the cycle to nitrate ions. Nitrification is a two-step process capable of being carried out only by chemoautotrophs such as nitrosomonas and nitrobacters. The first step in the process is converting ammonia to nitrite ions and the second step which happens quite quickly is converting those nitrite ions to nitrate ions which the plants can then use. This leads us to the last stage of the cycle and perhaps the most important one because this is the stage where nitrous oxide is released. So denitrification is a process wherein the nitrate ions get converted back to atmospheric nitrogen. Denitrification occurs when there is a lack of oxygen in the soil which is usually the result of waterlogged soil. Because there's a lack of oxygen in the soil, aerobic bacteria such as Pseudomonas use the oxygen atoms present in nitrate ions which were originally supposed to be taken up by the plant roots. 
So when these bacteria consume oxygen from the nitrate ions, the three atoms in the nitrate ion get converted to two atoms, making them nitrite ions. The bacteria continue to do their job and consume the oxygen in the nitrite ions, converting them to nitric oxide. This nitric oxide is then converted to of course nitrous oxide which is released into the atmosphere. The one oxygen atom from the nitrous oxide molecule is further consumed by the bacteria and the final product which is atmospheric nitrogen is released thereby completing the cycle. Denitrification depends on factors like the temperature and the pH value of the soil. But most importantly, it depends on the amount of nitrate ions and water in the soil. And this is precisely what happened in the Green Revolution. To meet the requirements of the growing population, farmers started to over-irrigate and apply fertilizers more than what the crops needed in the hopes that it would yield better results. But what it really did was release a ton of nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. A study conducted in 2019 by the US Environmental Production Agency showed that the amount of nitrous oxide emissions due to human activities such as over-fertilization and over-irrigation amounted to almost 48% of the total emissions that year. And many experts predict that by 2050, anthropogenic emissions will exceed the amount of nitrous oxide emissions that are caused naturally. The release of nitrous oxide into the atmosphere is inevitable, as is the release of any greenhouse gas. But there are ways from which we can reduce the nitrous oxide emissions caused by us humans. A group of Canadian scientists have come up with a strategy of 4 hours that are designed in a way to not only meet sustainable goals, but also reduce nitrous oxide emissions by a lot. Right rate means that we should simply try and avoid over-fertilization. Over-fertilization adds more ammonia, which results in more nitrate ions, which increase the chances of something like denitrification of happening. Techniques such as soil sampling and plant tissue analysis can help and predict to a certain level of accuracy the amount of nitrogen fertilizer that a particular crop might need. Right place suggests that nitrogen fertilizer shouldn't be applied too deep into the ground. Because if we do, most of the nitrate ions go beyond the reach of the plant and become subject to leaching. As denitrification occurs in waterlogged conditions, right time suggests that farmers apply nitrogen fertilizer where the chance of the soil being waterlogged due to natural phenomenon is less. The last R, which is right form, recommends that farmers use nitrogen fertilizers in the form of urea and products such as nitrification inhibitors. These significantly increase the time it takes for ammonia to get converted to nitrate ions, thereby giving time for the excess water in the soil to evaporate, thereby reducing the chances of denitrification. The 4 hours have their own disadvantages. But if farmers try and follow even one of the 4 hours, we can reduce nitrous oxide emissions by a significant level. Earth has seen many ecological changes and mass extinctions in its 4.5 billion years of existence. There was a time when each and every part of the Earth was covered with lava, and there was also a time when every inch of the planet was covered with ice. Be it wiping out another human species, or be it landing on a piece of rock 384,000 kilometers away, Homo sapiens have always shown immense courage and determination, and have won each and every battle they have fought. So even though we have less time in battling climate change, there are still many reasons to be optimistic. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.